Hi guys, welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. Today we are going to look at a concept in mathematics by the name decimal fractions. Decimal fractions are very important because basically our metric system that we use in order to maybe calculate or try to determine the specific quantity in figures or in different areas depends on the decimal fractions. So we are going to see on how we can be able to manipulate or try to use these decimal fractions in order to represent quantities in various ways. And also we are going to see some uh, of the rules which are applicable especially in operation of decimal places and uh, this is going to assist us especially in trying to express or try to give out quantities in this particular way of uh, presenting them in decimal fractions so without further ado thank you and welcome so as i've said we're going to look at the topic in mathematics for today and our to topic of discussion for today is going to be decimal fractions so as i've said this one will form a very significant part of our, our discussion and representing quantities for both mathematics and sciences since our our numbering system as i've said is a is, is a decimal system that it of course is based on uh, the number that is 10. so in this case we can uh, basically define a decimal fraction as of course uh, a number that has got or a number that uh, a number with one or more digits beyond the unity place and we are going to to represent it suppose we have a number like three three twenty four point one six this number can be regarded as a decimal fraction because basically it has got at this particular point this is why we got what a unity value for unity we say that a unit is one and there's this of course a point the period point that we are referring to as a decimal point so this is a decimal point and from the definition we have said that a decimal fraction is a number with one one or more this is a number with one or more digits beyond the unit the unity place that of course we have called uh, the decimal point So the characteristic of numbers that obey this kind of a statement or fall under that category is what we refer to as decimal fractions. Now the, inter the integer digits, of course we talked about the concept of integers when we discussed about numbers in one of our videos, which was basically concerning numbers, natural numbers, rational numbers, irrational, etc. So therefore the integer digits are separated from the decimal digits by this period that I've called a, a decimal point. So therefore, on this particular side of the, our decimal fraction, we have what, what we call a, the integer digits. And this side, the other side that we have said, is known as the decimal digits. So therefore, the this 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 uh, integer digits are so we have said they are separated from the decimal digits by this decimal point that we have just given a, an example there. Now in this case, we are going to see that uh, these numbers basically, as we have said, that they are uh, based on the number ten. And for decimal fractions, we are going to see that they are represented using different values. For example. If I give a number like, uh, let me just give a, an example. If I have a number like uh, 528.35, this one is now in trying to figure out its value as a decimal fraction number or as a, a number in this decimal system 
we're going to see that uh, 5 actually represents a quantity that is a product of 5 and 100. And then for 2, this one represents a quantity that is, of course, of 10. So we know from the number line we have got positive side 10s, 100s, etc. So as the numbers increase in that order, we're going to see that these different values are represented by the power of 10 using different quantities. So in this case, this is going to form a basis for our discussion in trying to figure out the position diagram for decimal fractions and how it can be represented. So if I try to draw the position diagram for these decimal fractions using this particular setup, so I'm going to have this point at this point, which is a decimal point at that particular place. So if I have a, a number like the one that have, I had indicated, 528.35, and for this case, the first digit that appears after the decimal point, that one is the digit that we refer to as unit, and then the other one that appears at that point is what we refer to as tens. So as we increase the power of 10, these are the different names that we are going to assign to these specific digits as they increase in value, especially towards the left side. So this one we shall have at thousands. So after the decimal point, just to do away with this name now that I've given it a description, after the decimal point, we shall also have uh, other values that are going to be represented using tens, hundreds, and then in that order, they will just follow like it's, it's, anal it's analogous to this positive side, but there's going to be, of course, a suffix that we add at that point, which is, of course, uh, this suffix. That we are going to add in order to represent the fractions. So in that case, we are going to have thousands, etc. So in that case, this is a position diagram that basically that is used to represent what we call decimal fractions. And I'm going to see that uh, <coughs> a number like this one now, as I've said, the value for five, this one represents hundreds, and this one represents tens. And this one, of course, is unit represent eight. So the, the other one that I've listed for, of course, three, it's going to fall under this. This is a tenth, and this is a hundred for five. Suppose there was a seven here, then it will fall under, of course, that particular setup. So for that case, we are going to see that uh, there's going to be a to movement towards the right side is going to increase the value of the decimal places or the decimal fractions of course in terms of numbers not in terms of quantity and moving towards the left side of that is going to increase in terms of both quantity and the value of that number so importance of decimal <coughs> fractions is that uh, of course for for the modern day or the current system is that uh, to simplify calculations this is a system that is normally that is used uh, and the scientists use the, of course, the metric system, which is basically based on the decimal fractions. So <clears throat> there are different ways in which we can be able to read this combination of numbers that we are referring to as decimal fractions. And we're going to <coughs> look at different examples on how we can be able to represent them in both numerical figures and words. So if I have a number like 273.16, this number is going to be read as 200, 270, 70, and then we have 273. So this is the, of course, that part of the fraction that we call the integer part of the fraction, and then the other part of the fraction which we have called the decimal, the decimal digits. Are going to be read by 16. 16, this is a hundreds. Okay. 
So this we normally in our day applications we normally read that 273.16 but this particular kind of uh, uh, statement implies that there's a value that is uh, added to the digits that come after the decimal place and that one is represented as such. Now suppose we have no value at this uh, integer digits and we have 0 0.39 basically or the normal way that we refer to them. So we shall have this one read as 39 hundreds. So that's how we read the specific or different decimal fractions that contain the integer and the, the decimal digits that are listed on the board. Now these numbers of course can be written in a, a reverse way. Now suppose we have this statement here that we are requested to write the number and that's the specific order that we are going to use. Now we have different rules <coughs> which are used whenever we are dealing with operations of these decimal places or decimal fractions and we are going to see a few examples on how we can be able to perform operations with these uh, specific decimal places. Now like the real numbers, decimals, decimal fractions obey three basic those of arithmetic. So we are going to list here. So as we have said, these decimal fractions of course behave as other numbers in so far as their operations are concerned. But we are going to look at three basic laws of arithmetic which can be used in this case. So we have what we call a a commutative a commutative law. This is a law for arithmetic operation that is also applicable to decimal fractions. For instance, if I have a number that is 4.51 and then I'm trying to add this number to 3.75, this one can be expressed in the same order as 3.75 plus 4.51. Suppose it's a multiplication and I have this number 4.51 times 3.75 and this can as well be expressed as 3.75 times 4.51. So in this case, of course, uh, the, we, we can see that uh, the quantities for this are just uh, complying with the one on the right and the left side. And therefore, the decimal fractions obey the laws of uh, com the commutative laws of arithmetic operations. And the second law that we're going to look at is. Uh, The law that is we call associative associative law. The associative law of a uh, arithmetic, of course, uh, uh, the law, associative law for arithmetic operations. For this, we're going to look at an example. For instance, if we have seven point zero three as a decimal fraction, plus uh, I mean times uh, or just uh, just use an addition first, plus five point. 58.6 and this one uh, for associative law now suppose this is just a part of uh, an operation and then we have 1.20 a part of uh, uh, a problem and then we have plus 1.20 this one can as well be represented as 7.03 uh, 58.6 plus 1.20 so in this case, of course, this one obeys associative flow in that we can be able to associate this one with this other one. In that this one can be added using either 7.03 or 5.68. So that one obeys the associative flow. And for a number that is, of course, being used maybe for a product, which is 58.6 for the decimal fractions, and then we have got this uh, times 1.20 for product, then we are going to have a 7.03, of course, times 58.6, and then times 1.20. So for that case, this is how we can be able to illustrate that the decimal fractions, of course, obey the associative flow of arithmetic operations. So lastly, we are going to look at another law which of course the decimal fractions obey with respect to their operations. So we have a, what we call a distributive law. 
distributive law for alternative operations. So in this case, uh, suppose we have a, a 3.95, which is being multiplied by, uh, so this one, in addition, plus 1.20. And we are going to have this one represented as 3.95 times 7.03, and then times Just, 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 just confirming. So this one is just a plus. So this times this one is three point nine five times one point two zero. So in that case, this one is going to be distributed find, by finding a product with the respective quantities in that uh, parentheses. So in that case, uh, that is what we can use for demonstration of a decimal fraction that is obeying the di distributive flow for arithmetic operations. So we're going to see on how we can be able to do an addition or a subtraction, or a, specifically on how we can do an operation on these decimal fractions. And in that order, we are going to see that uh, for addition, for addition of decimal fractions, we are going to write the numbers in a way that uh, their decimal points are aligned vertically. Now, for instance, we have a number like 0 0.1 or 0 0.014. And then we are going to have another one, 1.00. Just, I'm just using the literal reference instead of the statement that we had given for, for, for the sake of I just uh, trying to make it more understanding. So this is 745.7. So as we can see, the numbers have got different decimal places, whereby some of them, of course, like this one, this is uh, tens of uh, thousands, this is ones, and this is uh, hundreds. So in that case, we're going to use a specific order, whereby we write the numbers such that their decimal places coincide. So therefore, if we have a number like 745.7, well, then we're going to write 1.0056, and then lastly, we're going to have 0 0.014. And then do an addition. So the essence here is to ensure that the decimal points of this all these numbers coincide, and therefore we are going to add them in that specific order, as we do with the with the normal operations of other integers which are not decimal fractions. So in this case, we are going to see. So the remaining parts of these other numbers which do not have uh, their spaces filled like this, we'll assume that the values for these numbers are zeros. So therefore, we shall have uh, this one as six. Nine, one, seven, and then that is six, four, seven. So this will be the value for the addition of this specific kind of a decimal fraction by just trying to align the numbers in a sense that the decimal points coincide, and then we do a normal operation as we do with other integers. Now for subtraction also, it follows the same order as the one that we have said, and the order can be done, of course, using the concept that we have used for addition by making sure the decimal places align and then we do a normal subtraction just as we do with the other integers. Now in this case, of course, we can have a, an operation that entails a multiplication. Now for decimal fractions for multiplication, <coughs> first we ignore the decimal places and perform a normal multiplication as we do with integers, and then we can find the sum of the decimal places in the factors. Therefore, at last, we are going to also insert the decimal places in the product. So in this case, uh, suppose we have a number like uh, 1.21 times 0 0.0056, and we are required to find the product of these numbers through multiplication. So in that case, the first step we have said is that we ignore ignore the decimal places, therefore we are going to have 121 times 56, which is going to give us uh, 6776. So this is an integer. So therefore, in computing this, we are going to disregard the decimal places first, but we are going to account for them in the last bit in a sense that we are going to have the sum of the decimal places that are contained in there, and therefore they are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Therefore, we are going to have the numbers, this number represented using uh, division of uh, decimal places, which are six. So therefore, this is going to give us a value of 0 0.006776. Yeah. So that's the normal way in which we do operation with this decimal places. And for the case of a uh, division of decimal fractions, now for division of decimal fractions, we are going to have a, of course, it's represented in this specific order, whereby if we are requested to find, for example, the product for the division of a 47 by 0 0.014 and this one we're going to do it by just writing 0 0.1547 over 0 0.014 so in this case we're going to use the uh, the powers of 10 and for both numbers we move the decimal places using the, the same factor so if I move with two decimal places it's just the same as multiplying both sides maybe by a hundred or maybe by a thousand just to make it convenient but we just have maintained the value in those particular digits so if i multiply both sides by a thousand then i'm going to have this number as 154.7 over 14. so in this way i'm trying to make the divisor which is an integer and perform a ordinary division as we do with other integers. So in this case, if I attain this particular number, then I'm going to perform a normal division as we do with the normal integers by just finding the answer for that one. So this is 14, 14, 1, 14, and 7, 0, and then 3, 7, 0. So this is going to be one five. So this is fourteen by five sixty. So if I write sixty here, this is ten. So therefore, <coughs> to two decimal places, this is going to be around zero, eleven point zero five or eleven point zero six. Just not being specific because this fourteen divided by a hundred. Which is going to give a figure more than five. So I've just done a roundup for that specific value. So that's <coughs> how we do a normal operation for those kind of uh, decimal fractions. And lastly, we're going to look at uh, the concept of rounding off of decimal fra fractions. Of course, we normally we come across different figures or uh, maybe products that contain a range of large numbers, especially on the decimal digits. Therefore, there is need for us to try and write them in a simpler form or maybe in order that maintains the minimum number. So that is the concept of rounding off. So when we are trying to round off, there are specific rules which we are going to use in order to round off decimal fractions. And the first one is that we, for the last digit to be dropped that is less than 5, we are going to retain, of course, uh, I'm just going to write using an example so that we can be able to understand. So this statement says that for the for us to write this kind of a digit maybe in two decimal places, this means that we have to maintain the last decimal place to be at that point. So if this number that is preceding the decimal place is, uh, of course, uh, less than five, then we just, so if this number is uh, less than five, and we're going to drop this digit and have 3.14 to two decimal places. But if that number is uh, more than five, then therefore we're going to have that one, the preceding number before the, of course, that three digits increased by one. So we shall have 3.15 to two decimal places if this number is more than five. So, so that one implies if this one is uh, more than 5, then we are going to have this one as an answer. If it's less than 5, then we are going to have this one, of course, as an answer. So therefore, that is the first rule that is going to be obeyed. And if the digits above the above is greater than 5, the return digit is increased by 1, as I have illustrated. 
and uh, there is uh, maybe a specific example that we are going to follow. If uh, the number that we are writing, maybe if we require to express a number like this to two decimal places, this is a 16 or 50. If this number is required to be written in two decimal places, uh, the number that precedes this one is a zero. Therefore, that one we are going to round it off in a different way. And that is why we said that if the digit to be dropped is 5 followed by 0, the last digit, the last retained digit is unchanged. So we are just going to have it as 5. And uh, of course, that is going to form our last bit or bit. Now, for that case, for a number with a non zero digit following the number that is to be dropped, the last digit is increased by one. For instance, if we are required to round off 2.8530 to one decimal place, then this is going to be 2.9 to one decimal place. So we are going to see specific examples maybe during our, uh, pro uh, our, our, our discussion for problem solving. In case we come across a decimal fraction that required to be solved using the specific rules that we have mentioned, this is going to be of essence to us, and it's going to assist us. <coughs> so that's the end of it for today. So for this topic of decimal fractions, they are very much applicable, especially in trying to do some analysis, maybe in chemistry, or trying to figure out a particular quantity in physics, and especially also in trying to figure out some problems in mathematics. So I hope that this is going to assist us in trying to work out these problems of that nature. And uh, it's going to assist us also in expanding our knowledge on decimal fractions. So that is it for today. Thank you, guys. Bye.